Hello, Jason. KO4TFE here with the promised TR35 build. Um, so I don't know if you heard, but John WA3RNC is uh, retiring. And so basically whatever is left of his inventory is all that's left and there won't be any more. So I decided to go ahead and spring and buy a TR35, which I've been wanting for quite some time. And I knew this was uh, going to be my last chance to get one new. So I went ahead and picked one up and uh, we're going to put it together today. This is probably going to be a several part series as I go through building the kit. Um, today I'm going to work on uh, building the upper board, which is the first step. So we'll see how far we get. But this is basically what you get if you're able to get one. It's packed just like this. So it's a cardboard box with a whole bunch of uh, bubble wrap <clears throat> and all the components. Um, they are put together in strips like this and they are supposed to be in the order that you need them. So we'll see uh, how that goes. But the first thing we need to do, I've actually already read the instructions. So it looks like he's got instructions in here too. I downloaded the digital copies um, as well. So I'm going to go through those instead of the paper copies. <clears throat> But, uh, see this strip says the upper part, upper board components, so let's go ahead and grab him. And I'm just going to leave everything else in the box for the moment. The PC boards are packed inside of the case here, so we have to take the case apart to get to the uh, PCBs. Wow, that green is really nice. I've seen this uh, case or this uh, radio and videos a whole lot and it always looks kind of washed out which it looks like it does here too but it's really nice um, kind of a deep almost like a hunter green which is pretty cool. I like that. So I'm going to uh, let's get this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to take the closure apart. having some uh, issues with my wrist and these are in there pretty good. I don't want to use any power tools though, but and that kind of hurts to undo. All right, there we go. All right, so here's the board stack and just so I don't lose these I think I'm gonna I might not I don't think I need the case for anything at the moment so I'm just gonna kind of gently put these back in here that way I hopefully will not lose those screws okay so our first step here is to take these screws out that hold the lower board in. It says that the spacers need to remain attached to the upper board. And if you can see, there's actually two spacers. There's one on top and one in the middle. So I'm assuming that both of those need to stay attached to the top. So I'm going to try to keep those from coming loose. So we do the upper board first. So I'm going to just make sure these are tight so they don't come out. And actually, I'm kind of surprised there's not a whole lot of surface mount components <clears throat> on this. I don't know how well you can see it. We'll look at it under the microscope in a bit. Um, there's not a lot of assembly, it looks like, and not a whole lot of surface mount. I just built a QMX kit and um, there was a surprisingly a surprising amount of components on there that were surface mount. Now the real question is how do I avoid losing 
these four screws. I'm going to see if I can let them rattle around in the case here. Okay, so here's our board. Let's get my little soldering mat in here. It's going to burn my desk up. And uh, you can see he's already got the BNC connector soldered in there because it takes a good deal of, good deal of heat to get that guy in. So, let's see, upper board notes, it says here that all parts except the crystal should be tight against the board, especially the capacitors, if they extend above, oops, actually I set the wrong board, right here, that's the lower board, here's the upper board, so if they extend uh, above the 12, meter, 12 millimeter spacers, the case won't go together, and he also recommends attaching or uh, once the display is mounted, putting fingernail polish on the screws to keep them from backing out. So, as we mentioned, or as he mentioned, here's the PC component strip. So this is all the upper board parts, and it says they're in order from instructions 1 to 13. So number 1 is going to be our crystal here, and indeed is the number 1 thing in the kit, which is pretty handy. Pretty handy. So this is our 16 megahertz crystal. Fine. Uh, did I bring solder this time? Yes. So this is going to be X1. So let's look at the uh, sheet. This is a little bigger. Okay, there it is. In the lower right hand corner here. Oh, again, uh, he mentioned specifically in the instructions that this should not be mounted flush to the board. So I'm going to try to get oh, my soldering iron is tangled here. Here we go. I'm going to try to get a little bit of solder melted on my iron here. Just get it to tack into place. Now, I'm going to heat this up and let it fall down just a bit so it is not flush to the board. It is not. So I'm going to bend this leg over to kind of keep our height here. And then we will solder this guy. So you want to apply your iron to both the part and the pad and just touch the solder to the opposite side of where your iron is and that will the heat will draw the solder into the joint all right and so I'm going to bring my microscope over here my eyes are getting worse and worse and I'm going to <clears throat> inspect my work here a little bit this microscope is probably the best investment I've ever made it is it was like 40 bucks on Amazon I believe and it is fantastic it actually allows me to <clears throat> to really see things <laughs> All right, so I'm going to trim these off as flushly as I can. Of course, my diagonal cutters here are a little dull. These are just Harbor Freight specials, and they're, uh, you know, like a dollar, two dollars at Harbor Freight, <clears throat> which, you know, they get the job done, but they are not, they don't last terribly long. So, all right, so we got our crystal. 
it should be about 132nd to 116th of a forward solder and trim the leads. All right, so now we're going to install our 28 pin socket, which again should be the next thing down, and it is. All right, so the notch must be towards the center of the board. There's our U1. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little notch right here <clears throat> that will line up with the notch right there on the silk screen. And we want to make sure that all of our pins went through. Which they did, it looks like. And I have in the past done really dumb stuff like been off by a pin so I'm gonna look at my uh, look at my alignment here I'm not even sure I can see the pin sticking through there Let's see. focused all right so there we go so we're lined up on all these guys I, I built um, did a minty keyer build that actually <laughs> Got an IC in off a row, which was unfortunate, but looks like this one's good. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just going to, it doesn't even matter. I'm just going to touch one of these and tack it. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side just to make sure that I can hold this guy nice and flat and make sure I got my notch the right orientation, which I do. All right, let's get just a little bit of solder over here. Hold them flat, heat this guy up, and hold them flat. All right, there we go. So another little thing that I actually built here recently, uh, this is called a stick vise. And I saw this for sale when I was looking for some helping hands. And a lot of people use helping hands to hold the board up off the bench. The problem with that is in order to be stable, you want your soldering hand to actually be touching the desk. It gives you a lot of stability. So if you're trying to hold the iron up really high like this, then um, it's hard to remain stable. So I was looking for something to keep the board down low but allow me to hold it off of the bench. And so I found a thing called a stick vise on Amazon. It was like $40. I thought, well, man, that's something I could really build. And when I went to the official webpage, they actually encourage people to build their own and to hack um, different jaws and stuff. So these are just 3D. There's a 3D printed base so there's three little bases here it's a quarter inch aluminum rod that goes through the middle with some springs so you can hold some tension on the board and these upper jaws you just 3d print and screw into the bottom so if you have some crazy custom shaped board you can actually design your own jaws for it these notches here if you turn these around they're really good at holding connectors like you're soldering wire in this case i was using the uh, heat gun <laughs> to heat something up and kind of melted this one these are just pla so that, uh, that's what that is there, but I think I'm going to use this to hold this guy up off of the bench. So get a little bit of spring tension, just tighten that dude down. There we go. I need to get my solder fume extractor here. Help me out a little 
bit. I hope it's not terribly loud. It's not too loud, and I can, uh, and if it is, I can filter out in the uh, post processing. Some of these first ones here, they were quite hot and I didn't want to flow very well. Alright, now I'm going to let's go on to the microscope. And that's why we look at things, because I completely missed one pin here. These connections, while well, they would probably work, uh, there's a little too little side. What you really kind of want is a little pyramid. You can kind of see the shape of those, but you want sort of a little pyramid shape. Um, if you don't have that, you might not have enough solder or good contact. And if you have it like this one, you can see he's connected, but it's kind of anemic looking. And then this second one, I don't know if this is a ground connection or what this is, but there we go. It looked like it was kind of a cold joint there for a little bit. And you can kind of tell, you want it to be nice and shiny. <clears throat> if your joint is dull, it's kind of a ball that looks like it's sort of floating above the connection itself. And you've got a cold solder going it. And it's not going to do you any favors.
this is why I'm really glad I got this microscope. It's just a USB microscope. It plugs into the USB, or you, it actually has a screen on it as well. That's what I use most of the time. It's really nice just to be able to see stuff like this because, again, eyes are not getting any younger. <clears throat> Alright, so now what we need to do is trim these leaves. I'm going to go over here with the trash can. I'm pretty sure that did not work at all. Those cutters are too dull. I'm probably going to have to go get some to finish this project up. Let's see. I got a little bit of trim there, but these are just really, really dull. And he mentions in the instructions that these pens can short out against the toroids on the bottom board when you assemble it, if you're not careful. So I'm going to forge ahead, but what I'm going to do is, uh, before I assemble this bottom board, I'm going to get some new clippers to make sure this top board is well, well trimmed. Okay, so now we got to install the OLED board. Makes me kind of nervous. A lot of steps in the instructions here. He mentions how to get this guy done right. So, install the OLED using the provided spacers and four screws and nuts. The nuts go on the bottom. Do not over tighten. Now that's funny. <laughs> For jumper wires, he actually just includes two resistors so that you can cut the leads off of them. Which is funny. I mean, I guess resistors are only a penny or so a piece, so might as well, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. Alright, so there's our display. And here's our hardware kit with some spacers, screws, nuts, and sacrificial resistors. Here carefully. Well, I'm not sure what the best way to do this is without losing anything. I'm going to try to get all four of these in at once. Which I'm afraid of. What I may do is try to get two of these guys. our holes and then just kind of gently caress these under here. Needle nose. All right. So let's see if we can just kind of guide this guy under here. Probably gonna fail when I go to put the nuts in here. I can just slide this guy. I think it's easy enough to get in there. All right. So a smaller tip size here. 
office slash workbench is an absolute wreck right now. I'm starting the seeds for our garden. And so most of the room in here is taken up with the grow lights and all kinds of stuff. There's a tiny, tiny little screw head there. Let's see if we can maybe... This is not going as planned. <clears throat> so let's regroup a little bit. So I'm going to take, let's see how shaky it is. I'm going to take this out of the vise for now. To I'll do one at a time. Let's take this, put the spacer over. If I can just get them that started to hold them into place. Put that on there. Let's do the other corner here so it's not wonky. Nope, my nut came off over here, so I thought I had them started. I guess not. This is tiny, tiny, tiny little hardware. I don't want to tighten them too much because it will, of course, make it difficult to get the rest of the screws in here. I've already lost my screw. He said not to lose the nuts, which I didn't, but I did lose the screw. <laughs> oh boy, it's always something. Do you see it anywhere? Because I sure don't. Ah, here it is. My magnetized screwdriver grabbed it. Thankfully, because it would have been on the floor otherwise, probably, and I would never have found it. Alright, this seems like it might be the most fiddly bit, so hopefully things get easier after this. Right, it says not to tighten this too tight. I'm going to tighten it just so it's not wobbling around. Now let's take our resistors and cut our leads off here, just to have our connectors. Just again, I think it was kind of ingenious and hilarious at the same time. I built a QCX Mini and a QMX, 
And I know they tell you to keep the cutoff leads from stuff you used to use for connecting different pieces of hardware, but to include resistors strictly for the leads is unique. <laughs> kind of makes sense though, they're the right size to put through the holes. I wonder if I'll be lucky enough that these will go through the holes and touch the bench so that they'll hold at the right height. Looks like maybe they will. I want that to be a little bit higher up, so let's see. Do I have something I can put under here? I want something for a spacer. It's too thick. just about right. So all I want to do is just have this go through both boards and give me enough maybe one at a time actually. Give me enough lead on the bottom sticking out. touch with these connections once we get all four all four of these guys in if we need to. I'm just going to leave this get some kind of nastiness right here. I don't want that to stay. Alright. In this case, I'm not using my vise. I want a little bit of pressure on the top of these so they don't come out the other side when they heat up. Just to show you too, um, having a set of flush cutters like this is very, very handy because what you want to do when you cut these off is lay them flat against the board like this. So they're parallel with the surface of the board and then when you cut your lead off, you've got a nice flush, uh, flush cut there. Alright, so let's bring our scope over and see how we did.
too bad. I'll touch up the ground a little bit, ground one a little bit, which is pretty common for your ground to be a little harder to do just because usually it's a plane in the board, so you have to heat up a whole lot of metal. This one's probably going to need, yeah, this one needs a lot more touch up. Get back in my vise here. I'm going to destroy that display by leaving it on the front there. So. Or you know, putting the pressure on it. Those guys look good. Let's make sure our top ones didn't come out when we. Yep, those look good too. All right. I think I might be about ready to wrap this up for today and go do some poda. Right, let's see here. So I'm maybe getting a little further. What are we? 13 steps. And we're on step four. Let's maybe get to step six or so. Alright, so we need R4 and R50. And these are both 5K trim pots. These actually go on the bottom, and the leaves come through the top, he says here. So the first one is R4, let's see if we can find R4. Is it marked on the bottom? No, if it's still marked on the top. R4 is up here, on the top. Guy in. And then what is the next one? R50. R50. Looks like R50 is our CW filter sensitivity. And R5 is the signal LED sensitivity. I'm hoping to get out and do some poda this afternoon. It's beautiful. It's about 70 degrees and very sunny. We've had pretty much the last couple of weeks it's been rainy except for a couple of days. And then on Monday I traveled to Indiana to see the eclipse, which was absolutely ridiculous. I've never seen anything like that. And my wife and I immediately afterwards downloaded the list of the next 20 years of eclipses to start planning trips to go see those. It's, um, if you ever get the chance, I would highly, highly recommend it to be in the path of totality. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Right. Oh, 
party. So let's see what these guys look like here. First one. Looks good. So cool. I think those are good. Now we have our signal LED, which is a yep, blue LED right here. Oh, that's pretty cool too. He put a little blue dot and an orange dot and a red dot so you can tell them apart because they're all water clear. Even though they're in the right order in the kit, and small details like that are very important. So, all right. So D6 is our blue LED. Let's flip this guy around the right direction. D6. And so the long one goes in the square hole. Man, I cannot probably see which one of those is square. So let's bring back the trusty scope again. Okay, so it's more on the right. There should also be a flat spot on the LED body, but man, this guy's tiny. Alright, so he's got a spacer on him as well, so I just kind of pulled him through so that the spacer is flush. And then bent the leads over. Now Hold over my vice here. And I get to solder in this guy. Alright, it's inspecting. Good. Stand you guys up and go ahead and get my flush cutters. And cut these two guys off. One thing I wanted to check too. I wanted to make sure on this display. Yeah, okay. I want to make sure none of those leaves were shorted. Alright, I'm going to go ahead, I think, and, and do the. Uh, remaining LEDs here, so the orange one. So next, and he is seven. See if we can find D7. I think that's him right there. Here, I think that's his D7 with the instruction or the uh, layout detail here. That's the lower board. That's the board. Yeah, so D7 is our orange LED. He is, in fact, right there. Square holes on bottom. Those are longer lead. and get our standoff flush with the board and just bend our leads over. Get them clamped back up here. One thing that's really, really important if you're going to tackle something like this is you want to have a really good soldering iron. And I'm using a Heiko FX888D. Uh, it's a great iron that's really inexpensive. It's like 80 bucks, 90 bucks, I think. But Weller makes some great ones. Xtronic makes some great ones. The key thing is you want it to be regulated. For years, all I had was kind of the standard, you know, Radio Shack, just a pencil iron that had one setting. And the problem with that is that it's basically just a resistor. 
And so when you apply it to the board, what ends up happening is that, I hope I got that in the right way. I think I did. What ends up happening is the heat from the, or the, uh, the board itself, let's see if I can see the flat side on this guy, I cannot, it's not quite, yeah, I think that's the flat side. Anyway, what happens with an unregulated iron is when you apply it to the board, you have a big hunk of metal, your components, the leaves, they all suck the heat out of the tip. Um, and then it just gets cool and you can't melt the solder. With a regulated iron, it's constantly measuring the temperature of the tip, and so when the, you apply it to the board and the heat gets sucked out, it actually turns the power back on to keep the tip at the right temperature. It makes a huge difference in the quality of your soldering and the amount of frustration that you face as well. Alrighty, so let's see. The red one goes into D8. Now we gotta find D8 here, the low battery LED. If he's over here on the lower right, let's look at our diagram again. Yep, D8 and the square hole is to the right. Yep, so we're gonna longer lead that way. So again, we just wanna push this until our standoff is flush with the board. And we can bend our leads over just to help us hold it in place. Lock in our vise. Actually, this guy doesn't want to sit quite level. I may level him out by hand a little bit. One thing that's pretty important with a soldering iron too is using the correct tip. So having an iron that has replaceable and interchangeable tips with a lot of tip options is very important. This is just kind of a medium wedge, uh, medium wedge tip. I also have a very thick tip for doing things like connectors, PL259s. I'm going to have some smaller tips for when I'm doing surface mount type stuff. And it is possible to do surface mount by hand down to a point. Once they get so small, you can't really, but. If you're going to do something like that, though, you definitely need a little scope if you want to try to solder surface mount stuff by hand. Alright, see what, how we did here. A little bit much on the ground. See how there's a little ball? That means it's kind of too much solder, but it'll be all right. I do have some solder breaks. I could get rid of some of that, but it's not excessive, so we're gonna just leave it. Now, let's see in here. Is there? Okay. All right. So, let's see, we're halfway through, actually over halfway through the first board. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and call it right now. It's been about an hour, and I'm going to go enjoy the weather. And then I'm going to get back on here and uh, finish this a little bit later. So, uh, make sure and uh, join me for the next part if you're interested in building up one of these, or just uh, kind of follow along and see how many times I screw up. Uh, but until the next time, 73.